Y'all, today we are interviewing Savannah Maria Garcia from Watt, California. So while we're waiting into the studio, we are playing her song. It's called Season It. Get it on YouTube, all platforms. Um, she is a very special person to me because I'm in her family on a different platform that she has. It's called Bigo. Feel free to come on over there and watch her as well. She's very um, outgoing, real, and transparent. Y'all will get to see that here um, in a little bit. So while we're waiting on her in the studio, we are playing her song. It's called Seasoning. It looks like that. So y'all can go and, um, you know, buy that iTunes, go to YouTube. You know, she has plenty songs out. Y'all can get to hear all that. We got a treat for y'all. So, yes. It's called Season It. Very nice song, you know, Season It. So, yeah, we waiting on her to pull up. Um, I hope y'all enjoy it. I want to do a little um, dialogue before she came in um, because normally I go straight into it. Um, and so I had a couple minutes early today because I got ready early. So I'm having good energy today. So, yeah, that's basically what it is. Um, we're just waiting for her to come, and um, it's going to be a great interview, so y'all stay tuned. You know, we're going to have um, some little surprises in here. We're going to definitely see what she is up to, okay? So we're going to just listen to some tunes. Um, hopefully, she pops in in a minute. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I hope everybody is in good health today, getting good energy on a Sunday fun day, enjoying family and just manifesting all your dreams and everything like that. There she is into the studio, you guys. We have Miss Savannah Maria Garcia. Let's go. Hi. How are you? I'm okay on yourself. Pretty good. Oh, thank you for coming. You can look you see me good. Can you see me good? Yeah. Can you see me good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you look so pretty, skin popping and everything. Thank you. Yes. Okay, let's get straight into it. Miss Garcia, let's go. So, how you feeling? I'm feeling wonderful. I'm feeling amazing. Glad to be um, alive. Woke up on the good side. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you always give good energy. I couldn't wait to do this interview. I'm like, I'm a part of SMG. I'm like, this is for the SMG fam. So love you are a sunflower mommy. I love it. <laughs> Aw. Okay. So tell us what you've been doing. It's okay. Tell us what you've been doing. 
Uh, let me move Louis Prince real quick. Okay. <laughs> He can come in the interview too. We love Louis. Oh, Louis Brands, enough. Enough is enough. I'm in a meeting. Now, what you were saying now? I was th- I was joking. I was saying he can come in the meeting too if he wants to. <laughs> right. Um, like you said, what I've been doing lately. Yeah. Um, lately, um, I've been like um I just recently um filmed my show of season two of Savannah Toys Box. Um it's called Toxic Love with uh, me and Molly. It's, it's called Mally and Savannah's Toxic Love, um, where I, you know, I'm on season one. I was looking for love, and I found love with Mally. And then we continued. We got a spinoff, and we, you know, we did our show and everything else. And I, I did Talks and Trabatties, and <clears throat> right now I'm basically working on my own brand and my own network the smg network okay are you excited to do that i know film means a lot to you that's your passion i'm very excited it, it get it get overwhelming and you you know i sometimes i get no hope or something like or or something and but i'm excited i'm, I'm i think i think it's something that's gonna you know push give me a push yeah i know when you talk about filming and acting and stuff like that i see the twinkle in your eye so what made you um you know coming up what made you want to get into film like um what made you have a love for film so to speak well um well coming up i've always been like you know always been in the light like i've always i always had so many goals and so many dreams that um i was always going to be a star i was going to be you know always going to have fame and you know i was always a leader so me being a leader it just made me want to um you know be in the industry and i said if i ever be a you know a get in the industry i i will always want to be a leader and it it led me on to you know further but because at first i started off print modeling as a gay man and then I start acting but I didn't have the support from my um, parents so it was so hard for me to like really have passion for that because I had passion for doing hair and makeup and then it was like I I'm I'm like this people person I have a great personality a beautiful heart I'm you know I'm generous I'm like always like this fun person and I had the personality where I, I didn't have to do so much. So I'm like, let me go try to be an actress or something. Okay. Yes, you do have a way with your supporters. So I want to get into that. Your supporters and your fans. I know me, I've been watching you since Facebook, Room 21. You have really paved the way for others. You really genuinely care for others. Now, you don't take no mess, but I've seen that you also nurtured and really um, helped uh, unfortunate people that are are around you that look up to you. Do you want to... Tell us about that, because I know some of your supporters, they they really, truly love you, and you really go out your way. I've seen you go out your way. <laughs> well, I, like, well, how I was raised, it was always to help and give back, even if you don't got it. I was always the person that, like, if I had a dollar, you, I'll give you 75 cents or a quarter, and I just have a quarter, I'll give you the whole dollar. And um, I just see, like, a lot a lot of stuff that I've been through and the way I was raised and how I had to go get it. And, you know, through the transitioning, through being in Hollywood, you ask so many people for help and it's like, they don't, they're rather like, this is for me. I'm not helping you. I'm not telling you, learn it yourself. And that's how I had to learn. And I'm like, I don't want to be that bitter person. I'm going to be a bigger person to try to leave an example and it's best for me like to help people if i if i got the resources give back you know 
Very good. Yes, I can tell that. And, and that really makes you happy too to see people happy because you have dealt with some difficult people I've seen, but you just like, you just believe you be like, uh -uh, I still want to help them no matter what right. y'all. You know? So I see you always, you know, in a positive light, you always try to turn a negative into positive. Exactly. What? Yes. <laughs> What three uh, things would you tell somebody who wanted to get in Hollywood like you and growing up in a rough neighborhood? Because I know you're from Cali, right? You're from L.A. You want to tell the people where you're from and, you know. Did it go out? I'm yeah, you did. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm a, let me put my bond on airplane mode real quick. <laughs> okay. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Is there, okay. Well, I just saw everybody. I was in an interview, girl. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, three things that I would tell somebody that you know want to be in Hollywood. Um, you first, you got the extra stuff. Is that what you really want to do? Because everybody think Hollywood is about the glitz and the gams and the cameras and stuff. It's more to that you know you got the extra self first extra self do you want to sacrifice you know mm -hmm. this is a, it, it's a sacrifice thing that you're doing when you're actually uh putting your life in the public eye you signing yourself over so ask yourself do you want to sacrifice and and you know just you know the second one is like you have to be strong and you have to have confidence and you have to have self-love and if you got them three things like if you got them three things for number two you'll make it and then the third one i would just say be yourself always be yourself always be your authentic self because if you try if you try to go be someone else it's not gonna put you where you want to be always be yourself and don't never try to be any Anybody else, I don't care if they look better than you, they act better than you, or whatever they do better than you, just always put yourself first, look in the mirror and say, I can do it. Yes. And is it hard? Um, do you think it's hard for you um, to be in a public eye, especially with, you know, all the things you have going on and being affiliated with all these different platforms? Like, how does that make you feel? Um. Well, at first, I, I I liked it, the attention, but then as I got so as I got so much popularity over the years, it had me scared. Um, it's like they like you know being you know being famous and popular is cute, and so you can't walk down the street in in pajamas or you can't. Um, go to the liquor store in a in a bonded or you you just can't be in a public by yourself and it just it get it get irritated it get it get frustrated it get you it mentally messes you up because it's like I live this regular life and now I have to duck and hide or don't go third places or be yeah. in third places and that's it Louis Prince enough yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, and what moves you? Like, what moves you uh, to keep in this industry? Like, what makes you be like, you know, this is where I need to be at. I'm finally, you know. Um, I think what moves me is people like you. You know, people who um su supports me and pushes me because it's been many a times that I wanted to just leave Hollywood alone, leave the industry alone and be regular. But um, when I do these reality shows and I do these lives, I feel like I'm um, I'm an angel to some people. And I'm like, you know, uh, I've noticed a lot of people have, they go through things. And when I'm coming up, when I just press a live or I'm on reality TV, just showing my face is it, it, it make people smile and i like to mm -hmm. see people smile even when i'm going through something stressful or not on the right page um 
you guys, my sunflowers, and whoever ever supported me pushes me more to not give up. Yes. And um, so I was going to ask you, what about dating in Hollywood? How do you feel about that? Do you think it's hard? Um, dating, um, dating is my experience. I don't think dating is, I don't think dating is good. Not even just being in the industry, but right now in this universe that we're living in, you have so many dating apps. You have you have so many everything dating, and nobody really care. You know, and you can't really find love anymore. And I'm like, me, I was dating like my I dated before, but I've never dated out in public until I started dating Mally. When I started dating Mally, I started to experience what the higher celebrities go through like i have a big name i'm dating you and you know your your up uh, your spouse can fuck it up for you basically so and if you want to be in this industry i just just say just have friends or just associates because some of the, you don't know what some of these people is there for to break you down to get clout from you to make themselves feel better and make you feel low and it's just like once they get it and they you know they they they's gonna they're gonna always be known from dating you so whatever they do is gonna brush out off on you so if you don't want to go through that stuff i i just think dating is not cute at all i don't want to date no more i don't want to love no more i like the man that the man that i thought i was in love with is just like it was so much disappointment there over the years. I know I could be stubborn and I know I could be, you know, mean, but I'm just like overprotected about my relationship and who I'm dating is out of respect certain things you don't do as dating somebody that's popular. Yeah. So you think that's what makes you put your wall up and just say, because it might be a great man, girl, who might sweep you off your feet, who you want, you know? <laughs> well, y'all always say great men. It's like, it's not, I, I don't been with people that thought they could sweep me on my feet. And it's just like, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, I, I, I know I experienced the trauma and pain from the past relationships, but when I'm in my new relationships, I be trying to make it better, and I try not to let that rub off, but if you do some certain stuff that I experienced, I'm going to let you know I experienced that before, and that's not what I came in a relationship to do. If I wanted to fuck, if I wanted my man to fuck three, four men at one time, I it's no need to be in a relationship with you, because it's like, I'm sharing my goods with other people, and I don't share. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can definitely coincide with that. You know what I'm saying? Who wants that? You know, <laughs> like they for the streets. So yeah, that's a complete letdown. So because you a queen, you public eye a lot, you know, and having to hear that over and over again, you know, and you're very transparent. You are so real and raw. You don't hide anything from your supporters, your fans. You always keep it real with us. And, and that's what helps me get through because I lost my mom and you was there for me. I was forever tuning in. You kept my spirits up. So I just want to say thank you for helping me get over my fears and over become, you know, death with my mom because I was going through a tough time and just having the SMG family, no support like SMG. I just got to give it to us. The Sunflowers, we are united. We stand because of you, Savannah. We are just, it's like we're a team and we just, we right. just need you and we just all just like, we stick together and just the love you have for us, it just really pours out. So I just want to say thank you for that. <laughs> you for being there for me. Oh, you're so sweet. So yes, where do you see yourself in five years? Because you have done it all. Um, in five years, my goal is right now is to like you know become a a big producer, um, live in Fab, you know my child Louis Brands, my uh, you know my builder bear um, Mallory, you know the nigga got the other one, <laughs> Mally as a twins, and just you know just I want to you know I want to open my resource in there give back to the trans community or not just even the trans community give back 
to the community that helped me survive my darkest moments and um, just living and having fun because that's all you could do nowadays is just live by the day and just live with no regrets. And I just like, I just want my production company off the ground, my network, um, good with my family and friends and just having fun. Speaking of family and friends, what do you feel like you being um, successful as you have been in your career? Because you have been, you've done ballroom, you have songs out. I can't even keep up. Like everything is like, she's a, you're a pioneer. You're a walking poster boy. You always look good. You're always, you know how to put yourself together from you showed us to go to, um, what's that place in LA you like going to? You call it's the alley where you can put outfits uh, yeah, together. Mm -hmm. You are very good at that, but you also are into your labels too. I know you're a label girl, but you don't mind going into the alley and just picking up stuff and telling us, hey, you can put on this cute dress and put a cute belt with it. So right. yourself going into fashion, maybe because you're so good with that. No, uh, because like when I was like when I was when I was growing up, you know, me and my friends, we was like, you know, at, I was out of my house at 16 and it was the way that I had to survive and make it and so um being around friends that i was we was always into the name brand clothes the, you know the jeans and the purses and all that this one this one i was like a gay you know a gay man and that's where that's what um when you're in the lgbtq com um, community that's a what it have a lot to do with fashion that's what we bring you with with fashion and labels and all that and i used to be like very materialistic you know i used like it was so expensive but i you know i did crimes and i did stuff to get it and i lived that life and i was like it's nothing but a name brand you know mm -hmm. that i could switch over and you know me I think as a man, when I was a gay man, I was more into like more of the fashion. And then as like being a woman, you could just throw on a cute dress, a uh, name brand shade in the bag and go on about your day. So, you know, I've always been in fashion, but it's never been like me to be a fashion designer or nothing. I just, me and my friends taught ourselves labels, magazines, and just being in ballroom that's what ballroom is consistent on the house names is about from labels um magazines and things that's what they make um the house names that in the barroom scene so being in a barroom scene and just like growing up um surviving it took me there yes you savannah like i said i have been watching you and it's just amazing to see all of your journey because you uh today me and one of your other supporters who love you dearly we uh we have some special things coming for you as well so stay tuned uh <laughs> later on for your birthday and stuff like that but mm -hmm. uh i have watched you you have like a million followers like you are just like if you're that name savannah maria garcia it pops up there them followers go up you are miss platform you deserve that name because you my dear you just get up there, your name, you make a video, it's going to go viral in a second. You want to speak right. about that? How do you feel like to be able to just come on screen and just make it go viral so fast? <laughs> I'm at, at, first, at, at first, I used to be, I used to be so excited to see my viral moments because it was like, I didn't have to do so much because I had that personality and a lot of people think it's like oh she's on drugs she do coke she all that but that's not what it is but a lot of people know have you ever hung around me when i ever did coke i'm more of like on the quiet side i don't talk i'm like like you know so it's like that's that's how i was raised i was always loud i was always in the community and i you know i i've always been myself you see what i'm saying and it's just like going viral i was like when I was going viral, all this stuff now, TikTok, all these viral moments, they get so much life. And I feel like I was going viral and I wanted that audience. But then once I got them audience and I was going viral and my viral moment wasn't adding up, it really 
hurted me. It really took me in another another place because it's like I'm going viral, but I'm not getting the credit for my viral moments. The only time people knew who I was is when they probably like, oh, I seen her on TV. I I um like I see her on Facebook or Instagram, but it was never like, oh. Savannah Garcia is viral. Let's tag her. And I feel like if I had them tags and all that, I would be up to like five, six million followers right now. And it's just like going viral right now. It's just like, I don't even like it no more. It irritates me because you got a lot of like me looking on YouTube, typing my name in. And I see that a lot of people record to me and they can pay off of my content. I'm not getting no credit for it. It just hurts. So it's just like, you know, viral moments was amazing until you don't get the credit that you deserve. And I done been in the news. I done been in the newspapers, viral moments, them the viral moments I had. And it was like, it hurts so much that I don't get my money. I don't get my credit. I leave something, some type of royalty, some type of look. And it's like somebody has to see me like you was like, oh, that's Savannah. Let me tag her in there. And it's like the main person that made it go viral is like, you You got all that credit off me. So it, like viral moments was fun until I didn't get the credit. Like you did a Pepsi commercial, which was amazing. You did a Pepsi commercial. I remember that. And um, do you want to tell us about your first acting experience? How was the Pepsi commercial and then going into your first acting role? I remember Hollywood Divas as well. If you want to talk about well, that? No, well, my uh, my first acting role was actually um, I played I played the gay man where um, I played a gay man where like um, like don't you know how the people was acting and I was on the TV. So they had me in the television and I was playing a gay man, straight man, well, gay man that was masculine and um I was dating some other gay men. And it's called the it's called the Rebound movie. It's they it was like a short film based on um um in San Francisco. So I did that in San Francisco. So that was my first acting gig, but my first gig was more of print model magazine, you know. Um like short little print magazine models stuff like it wasn't like big because i didn't have the because i was i started my career at 16 and it was like my mom and my dad was so more worried about my gender than signing over that you know let me model walk down runways but then when when i turned 18 i got that gig and then after that gig i got um i got another gig where i played um I played in this um, this documentary where I was like playing like an addict or something like you know I was a trans woman addict, you know, um, and I had found help in therapy and got sober. I did that, and then after that, um, I did another movie that's called um, it's called The Delight, where I um, when I was a gay man I played a drunk man where I was always drunk in the shower drunk. I played that different then I um I gave up on my career and stuff and I started experiencing ballroom and started experiencing the gay life and the gay life, the escorting life and all that. I experienced that. And then I was like, I need to fix it. And I you know, I met Countess I met Countess Vine through a friend um that i grew up with he introduced me to them and then me and countess became close and then that's how i became on hollywood divas wow okay. but before everybody think hollywood divas is my stardom but hollywood divas wasn't my stardom that was just my stardom into reality tv where like i'm grateful and i'm thankful for that moment but a lot of people thought of because that that was the biggest moment that I had up in my career when it first started. Okay. Now, did you experience like how people like family and friends that grew up around you when you went to Hollywood Divas? Cause that was a really big show. I tuned in as well. And um, did you feel like people were like, oh, she on this show, she got all this money. People start coming back around and start wanting to beg or just being your limelight. And how did that make you feel? How did you deal with that? If that happened? 
Um, I think dealing with that had a part of me not being so far up in the um in Hollywood, up in the industry that I should be, because you know when I was when I was grown and raised, I was raised in the Imperial Courts project. And watch, you know, the watch rivals and stuff. And I, it was a way that I had to survive. And me, me, you know, being gay and then my parents, and, you know, like these people, big names in the hood. And it's like, bitch, you know, excuse my language, but it's like, okay. um, they didn't, they didn't, you know, they didn't accept none of the stuff I did. So it was like, and I had to like go out and hustle. And so I was with certain friends that I had to hustle with. And one of my friends was like, when when he found out that I was on TV, he was like, oh girl. He was like, oh girl, um, I'm gonna go report all your pictures to the stores. You know, cause I used to be in the stores boosting, doing credit card for all manuals, like anything to keep me to survive. Like, you know, I had to survive. I didn't have like, like I always, had a roof under my head. My parents always said, it's a roof up in your head, but you're going to have to obey these rules. And I don't want to obey them rules. I wanted to live the life, you know, because I was in and out of jail. I was in and out of jail my whole teenager life. I was in and out of jail until I was about 20, 23, 24. I just when I realized, like, it's time to, like, stop. And then, like, you know, a lot of family was like, oh, you're in Hollywood, you got money. And I was like, no shit, my, the money ain't even what y'all think it is. I just got the gig. I the money, and when I got on Hollywood even the stuff, I was in a position where I was homeless. I was living in the streets, and nobody knew that. I was like, when I was going to film, I was catching a bus. I was bumming rides. I was going to I was going to the Goodwill, put on different clothes up in the Goodwill just to because I had a big gig. And I didn't want to mess up that. And after I got the gig, the money that gave me, I basically got me a new car. Um, mm-hmm. I try to put myself back in a position where I don't have to sleep from pillow to post, post to pillow. And um, I thought that me talking to people that I had dreams and goals and I had all this stuff that I wanted to be famous and want to be on TV and you tell these people you think they have your, you, you know, that your best interest and they support you. And all you're doing is telling them so they could pray on your downfall. And I feel like me and a lot of my friends and a lot of my family, I, all I ever wanted was their support to just like, you know, push me because I didn't have that push. I didn't have that guidance. All I just knew is that I wanted that light. I wanted to be a star. And, and I didn't know getting that light would push a lot of family members and friends away when they don't even know half of what you have to sacrifice to be in that type of position. And like, like yeah, money comes, but you know, money don't buy everything. And I can't, I can't buy friends. I want my friends to be around me when I don't have it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not being around like some friends, my makeup artist, my hairdresser. Sometimes I couldn't pay them, but they like we we not here for that. We here to help you because we know that we help you. You we're gonna make something out of it. Yes. So yeah, being like yeah, I done been in a situations where friends felt like I was there. I got too Hollywood for them. I stopped hanging around them, and it wasn't that. It was just that I needed to focus on myself, and then being around something that you was always used to would stop you from doing what you really need to do in life and that's the only reason why you know i stopped you know friends you know i guess you know and i miss some of the friends that i had these dreams with like right now i'm like <laughs> you okay mm. okay <laughs> Okay, you can finish. Yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying to um, get back with the friends that I grew up with to try to fix it because it felt like I felt like I gave up on my friends. Some, sometimes it makes me feel like I gave up on my friends because I like start hanging around other people. And when I got on TV, the friends that I did was raised up with, they, they didn't have no parts of my show and it, it hurted me bad, you know? Yeah. 
So what would your younger self, the younger Savannah, say to this now reversion of Savannah? <laughs> um, my younger self would just tell me to keep being myself and keep pushing and keep going because my younger thought my younger self taught me how to be who I am today. And you know, I had mistakes, I had mess up, suck up everything, but my younger self taught me how to be myself today and have confidence and fear nobody and just be myself. So I would just, my younger self, I would just tell myself to keep on pushing and be, being myself, but just watch certain things that I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're finally at a happy place? Because I think this is a new Savannah. I just think I see your growth. I see from start to finish, I was able to be there. So I'm honored to see this Savannah. I just want to say, man, you have inspired me. I'm just like, wow, you're a woman of many hats. I can't. Right. <laughs> I mean, well, well yeah. right, right now, I'm I'm content where I'm at. I'm not gonna say I'm you know happy. I'm I'm happy that I'm living still. I'm happy I got good health. I'm happy I got good people like you to um keep pushing me. Um, my sunflowers, um, mm -hmm. to keep pushing me and to never like you know give up because this is like this world that we're living in is just all messed up and you know I just want. I want better for myself. I know I, it's more out there to put me in a position where I'm just happy. You know, it was like, you know, you get happy, you get everything you want, and then it's like something just mess it up. And I want to be where when that mess up, still, I'm happy and I know how to fix it, you know. And then I, I felt like I had everything. I had my car and my dog, my surgeries. I had the man I was in love with and all that. I was happy and then just like something just triggered out. So I'm just content and I think what's going to make me happy is when I, you know, build my, build my um, network and build me more and bigger. You know, it's not all about the money. It's just about, I want my name to be rich. You know, once my name rich, I can walk in any door I want to, you know? Yeah. So that's my whole goal is, is to make my name rich and then start from there and maybe, you know, the money come. I was always raised up on money. So I was always a hustler. So when I don't have a dollar, I don't cry and you know, I don't complain. I just sit there and deal with it because I know it's going to come and I know how to go get it. And so, yeah, I'm happy, but I could be happier. Okay. Very good. Let's talk a little bit about the reality TV. So you were just on a reality TV called uh, South Central Baddies, was it called? Mm -hmm. South Central Baddies season four. Okay. How was that for you? Wait, be, be, be quiet. Let me get <laughs> Be quiet. Enough is enough. I'm in a meeting. <laughs> Louis France. Somebody bang, they banging up. You know, you said what happened? Louis. <laughs> yeah, Louis pissed. <laughs> Somebody banging next door, and I'm gonna cut them out in a minute. Louis, stop! Now you said what? Um, I was saying, just talk a little bit about your experience on uh that show called Central Baddies, uh, season four. How was that experience for you? Uh, well, my experience with that it was a different experience. It was something I was raised on on fighting. It, it was something I was raised on, uh, fighting, stealing people, being around black people. You can't leave your purse nowhere and all that. And it's like my, you know, my sister, Special K, was a producer of the show um, for season one to three. And, you know, she used to ask me to come on there and stuff. And I used to be like, no, I, you know, I want to change. I got my own show. I don't want to do it and all that. Then she took me to the reunion and I was supposed to be a trans activist and talk to the trans community as me experience what I've done through Hollywood. And I was trying to let the girl, younger versions of younger trans women know, like it's more than fighting in the industry. It's more than the beauty is more behind that, that y'all can get out there. And I went out there and then they tried to fight her. Then next thing you know, I'm fighting all type of different trans women that I don't know. 
And then so after that, they kicked, they, I don't know if they fired her or they dismissed her. Once they dismissed her, they asked to cast me from me fighting with one of the cast members. They asked to cast me and I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. Um, I, I don't want to do it because I, that was my friend and I felt like that's breaking the friends. You know, the friendship called this what we got in. And then, mm-hmm. I, then, you know, I got on my high horse one day like thinking like, yeah, I need to go up on there because I need to get my lick back because I fought people that I didn't even know. So <laughs> I need to go fight, you know, because when somebody tell me I'm getting beat up or whooped, I need to go fight again until I win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Louis, stop. It's okay. Uh, hold on, let me tell in the mood. Be quiet. Let me get him out of here. Come on. I just saw it on the internet. Okay. Sit down. Sit down. Don't say nothing. Hey, Jack. Hello. My dog's barking now. Here. Go ahead, sweetie. Um, so um, yeah, after that, um, they um Isaiah, um, he asked me to um cast me in. First they wanted me to be a um a pop up and then I saw my I saw my ex boyfriend Mally like he wanted me to go down there too. And I'm like, I'm not a pop up girl, but I'm not going up there to be a regular cat. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they call and I you tell I, I don't know why they call and you tell them that you're doing something. That's just like yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so um he, he actually I told my ex boyfriend like I'm not doing a backup, I'm not doing a pop up then I guess they did you know, as me having a sex change, they're like all oh, the other girl have a sex change. I don't know if sex change whether they were like, Well, we just only want you, we had cash you. So they cast me. I got casted for the position, and the around the time that we was going to film, the person that they had me on there, you know, the other trans woman, she backed out. I don't know for what, 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 what we're reason. I don't know if she was scared to fight. I don't know. If they said because the money wasn't paying or whatever, but I don't know. So while I was up in there, um, I, I, you know, I met some great people, cool people, but it felt like I checked myself in prison. So I like standing in the house with, the, with standing in the house with people that you really don't know. And you have to like eat when they eat, you know, do what they do. Uh, and, you know, being in there, I was having fun until, you know, um, I left my purse thinking I was, uh, I left my purse sitting down with five hundred dollars up in there, thinking I'm around good people because I've been in the industry and I done set my purse and filmed for hours around production and came back and my stuff was there and it was like I don't know if it was a setup, I don't know what it was, but I at the moment at the time I felt like because my friend Special K, like I said, the first time she was a producer, she, she told me, "Girl, don't go on there, don't do that, don't mm-hmm. go on there, girl." And I thought it was like giving hater hater tea, and I'm like, "Girl, you." You produce the shit and you telling me don't go on there. Girl, mm-hmm. like, you know. <laughs> and then when I went on there, I experienced exactly what she told me. And all I could do is apologize to her. Like, I'm sorry. I I, I did, did deserve that because my sister clearly told me the farmer do not go on there because they're going to rob you like they robbed me. And they know that you're my sister and they're going to do you wrong. And that's what happened. And But it was an experience. I had fun. I'm not, like, other than that, Going in my purse and stuff, I I had a great experience and I had fun. Well, I would like to ask you a little bit about Bigo. So I've known uh, you to be on Bigo. I've been in the SMG and your admin forever um, on Bigo. And um, we've seen Bigo transition yeah. a little bit. You were the first um, person to get a Millie on Bigo. 
So yeah. how does it make you feel yeah. being the first person? And I noticed that people, you, they can't compete where they can't compare. You, Savannah, you always set a trend. You have your own lingo, language. You always just have nicknames for people that are just... You just really set your own trends. And that's what I respect about you and I admire. And everybody else comes after you and try to do it. Um, how do you feel about that? Just being the first to uh, get a, a Millie off of there. Tell us about your Beagle experience and how it's changed. Uh, my, bing, my, bing, my Bingo experience, it's been amazing. Um, I found out about Bingo about, um, from Bo. Um, I don't know if they know, but you know Bo, but Bo. I was on Instagram and you know, I, I used to have like a lot of viewers and followers on Instagram before this one got took because this my Instagram got took from some um someone. My um Louis Bridge, my Instagram got took from someone and mm. after that, um he brought me over there and when I first got on Bingo, I didn't know it was like money. It was like nobody knew never talked about money. And once I found hold on. Louis. It's okay. I'm in a meeting. Can y'all get the fuck away from my door? I'm not playing. Hold on. Okay. I am not playing. I am not. I am not playing. I don't care. Stop. Get away from my door. Louis Prince, come on. Hello. Yes. I'm sorry. I don't no. know what they fixing on the Sunday right there. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and um, so um, what I'm saying, I thought um, I um, I found out about Bo um, Bo bring me over there, and I didn't know about the money. I was just over there, basically like just jumping mm -hmm. around, getting naked, smoking, <laughs> and then once I found out about the money, I met you know. I always knew Brandon Keys to the street, but um, Brandon, uh, um, Brandon um, knew me from like Room Twenty One on Facebook and stuff, and so he gave me, um, he gave me an um, a audition. They say it's money; you could go live making money, and I did the audition. I was the first trans woman to do the audition. Mm -hmm. I made the audition, and I start hosting from there. And I like, I can believe my eye that I was making so much money over there i was making like ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month just going live being myself and i just felt like bingo was a big part of my life look at me and you here now you know it's yeah. a big part of my life i done met some amazing people and it it didn't even have to it didn't even have to do with the money it's just the genuine people that you have as me being a trans woman has been accepted and the community, how you guys accept me there. You get what I'm saying? Mm hmm I noticed so, a lot of... And uh, that, million, that million was amazing. It's it, <laughs> like being the first one man making a, a million, it was like really, really cute. And a lot of people say you don't get that money on Bigo, but I, that's a lot because we've seen you put the money to good use always. You do that anyway. You're really good with money management, but with the big old money, we seen you do what you have to do. Now that with your production company or whatever, whatever you want, you have showed us that you can do it. So right. you talk about a little bit about that because a lot of broadcasters, it's no shade, but we all know they make certain amounts of money, and you know this because you 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 experienced it, and you are they're living in their car, and it's no judgment, but it's just like you guys make so much money on an app that you you know you're doing something that you love. Is that hard to see like your fellow Bigo broadcasters going through that, and how do you take that because you do so well with your money? Well, I like um, I like me growing up. I've always was taught to manage money like save money so i always knew how to save money because like it's like i i, I like to do stuff and it's like when, when since i've been on bingo like i don't that my supporters don't help me get a brand new mercedes they help me get a town move to vegas a brand new townhouse um a new apartment four uh, four under uh, four under four other um four other um cars and I had another apartment, and they got my teeth done. They got my uh, my body done. They got me a, 
uh, my sex changed my, you know, and these is from people that I don't know from a can from a paint just to be supporting me, and um, uh, like from the other broadcasters seeing them up in chorus and stuff. I, I think we I don't be in a situation like that. Even though me saving money, I don't gave up. Like I don't have my apartment and I don't gave up at all. And you you get so overwhelmed. You get so I think it's like. You get so overwhelming and, you know, you get so much money and you don't, I think it was about discipline. We're not disciplining ourselves. I think of a lot of us broadcasters with big money, we discipline ourselves, we'll be up there where we need to be. And it's been and it's been many a times I don't lost a lot of stuff from not disciplining myself or from my emotions for my uh, my emotions or for my mental health you get what i'm saying because y'all y'all see us on there on these live y'all see us but at the end of the day we have a life out of that lot out of that live and some of our lives is fucked up beyond them lives it may look good on the live but when we get off them lives it's been many times that i got off live and i broke down the cry and asked why i'm not here why am i doing this why i'm going through this and you got to keep this certain character and to keep the certain audience so i i would never like put a different broadcaster down or anything because i've been in positions where i had thousands and i've been in positions where i didn't have nothing as just on me um just being a broadcaster being experiencing money and having money and having all this luxury stuff and not knowing how to keep up with it and living in and i think some of us live above our means and we live for the internet and not living for ourselves mm -hmm. and that's where we i think we miss up like oh i need to have my hair cute uh, i'll spend my last 400 dollars on the wig or i go get all these surgeries because m people that i'm entertaining is making me feel some type of way and me knowing that i can't keep up with the shit and this is not some stuff i want to do and i'm doing it so yeah i i i applaud all the broadcasters even if they're sleeping in that car they're going to because most of them broadcasters I don't see make a lot of money and they just didn't know how to handle it. One thing I like about you, Obigo, is that you bring something to life. You have a special relationship with each broadcaster and each supporter. No matter what, even when y'all going back and forth, it's still love. You always bring it back to a positive um, and, and that's you're you're special to everyone, even to me. I feel like you have created the funerals, you have created uh the singing oh, yeah. did, um with the nails and stuff like that. You um had uh, what is it called? The auctions and the, the funerals, you do the mock funerals and stuff yeah, like that. Right, yeah. Bring that to Bigo. Like I sat there and watched you create like all these different content. Um, and then people try to duplicate them, but they, you know, it's nothing quite like Savannah's production. You know what I'm saying? So right. <laughs> it's definitely something to see because you definitely bring something to light to Bigo. I see you very much embracing, uh, your fellow broadcasters, you know, even when they're going through tough times, you align with them and talk to them and try to be the voice of reason for them because I think that you truly, you know, see something in them potential, you know? So we just yeah. appreciate with that savannah because a lot of people will kick people when they down and you always uplift the people no matter what but i notice when you go through things people are the first to talk about it they want to put it on scene or they be like savannah over here fighting but i noticed that people poke the bear with you because you really are a kind cool laid back girl you don't want no trouble but if they bring it to you then that's when the heat comes you know and i think that you're misunderstood with that you want to say a little bit about that you know well, um, like, yeah, I don't, like, I do entertain people and I do be in a mess. I'm not going to say I'd never be in a mess, but it's just, just being on bingo, you feel like, you know, mess sales. That's what sells right now. They don't like boring. And I was screaming, yell to my young lungs to be in the mess, but I've never just, like, just, like, picked on people. I just feel like a lot of people want to fight you for clout or they talk about you for clout. That none of them really have no type of content. So they would use my content and me knowing I'm putting myself out there and dealing with that stuff. I, I shouldn't, you know, I should be reacting to fighting because I know I put myself out there. But a lot of people don't understand that this is a character and I'm somebody and something. I'm, I, I'm human out of the lives. And, mm -hmm. you know, like doing the auctions and all that, 
when I got on bingo, it was like having auctions and um, performances. And it brought light to people. It made people happy. And now like being an experience of the, the new stuff, fighting and the jail, people going to jail, kids getting took in and all that. That's a whole different type of experience. And I've always seen something in people that I be around. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I've always seen something that low Cammies, the Isaacs, the AJs, the anybody that I was raised up on Facebook, even though I was more popular to them, I always entertained them because I seen that we can grow. We could be something, but you can't grow with nobody that don't want to, don't see the same stuff that you see or they are on the same level. So you leave them where you at, where they at. And I constantly, constantly tried to help and tried to help. And people would like, oh, she's on coke. She's crazy. She did tonight. No, it's not that. It's not the coke. Y'all always blaming on the coke. It's not that. I'm I, I'm seeing something to y'all. And a lot of people feel like being in the industry or being in that, you get paid. No, a lot of a lot of actresses, actors, reality stars, anybody popular right now, they have to do the groundwork. And if you don't do the groundwork now, it's gonna fuck you up in the long run. Then people coming for their taxes, they coming for their stuff. But that's why a lot of people, a lot of people be bankrupt or losing all their stuff, high drugs and all that, because you're not doing the formula right. And I, I try to teach a lot of people stuff what I had to let you know experience the hard way I, I had to experience the hard way and i'm trying to show y'all the easy way i'm trying to show y'all that y'all don't have to audition i'm giving y'all a platform y'all don't have to um do headshots y'all don't have to do a lot of the stuff i do but you know you can't help people that don't want to be helped and i see so much in them people but now um now i have to just focus on myself and do what's best for me mm -hmm. you're right and you have been, because you've been working, you've been focused. I've seen you say, I got to focus. I got to get off Vigo for a while, y'all. I'm sorry, but I got to focus on what God needs me to do. And you have done that, Savannah. And you always self-reflect and you always let us know, like, this is why I'm doing this. I got to do this for me now. I got to step back. So I appreciate you always being transparent and just being real, you know, with the people. Because a lot of people hide. We've seen people on Ingo even hide their life. And but you, you let us, you don't even, you tell your own story every day in your own way. You know, you always are your own voice. And that's the best way mom says, if you're going to tell your story, tell it yourself. You know what I'm saying? And so you do that. <laughs> yeah, I think, it's, I think it's the best when you become it, when you feel like you're going to have a lot of fame or become famous. I think it's best for you to tell your story than letting somebody else tell you because when the, a lot of people would try to, put you down on that industry and this internet is very a uh, dark place it's dynamic and it's like if you let it make you fold it will fold you and you just have, you know you have to have confidence for everything and because i i don't want it to give up so many times and i wanted to just throw it all away but it's like it's just something that keeps me going to try to be a star and the industry is like really really fucked up yeah it is how do you handle that though you just you just how do you handle all that because that's a lot on your plate with handling it and my ancestors my angels prayers um so my support system and that's how i handle that and just keeping myself because there have been so many times that i don't want to you know commit suicide or just didn't want to be savannah no more but it's yeah. like, why I don't want to be Savannah no more? And I work so hard. And like sometimes you don't have, I have no hope. And I feel like nothing good is going to happen. But every time I feel like I'm giving up, you know, my supporters and people like you keep me going. Oh, yes. And then I have a, another question. Um, So you have a lot of different languages. I, didn't, I wanted to get into some of your sayings. You have under the car. Um, <laughs> help me with some of the I things. I got under the car, <laughs> on the hood, because yes. Louis Prince, I'm in a meeting. Enough is enough. Yes. Uh, what's the scoop? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the scoop? Um, so many seasoning. Mm -hmm. uh, picking and popping. You know, uh, production. I got to say production. 
so many things and i i need to start like you know doing you know, something we need some shirts. We need some ID necklaces. If I got to help you on the back end, let's do it. We could collab. Right. I have my own merch. I want to see it on the shirt, Savannah, because you're you're so dope. Like, you got the whole app saying it. These are your words. I hope you patenting these words, honey, because everybody in the, you can see people coming in the chat. They got production. They got Savannah's production. They got, they got, like, they're commercial using Commercial break and all that. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I used to give commercial breaks on Facebook. So I started like, I want to go break. It's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so we love those sayings about you, Savannah. And I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be able to interview you as your admin for many years. Thank you for giving me a, 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 a voice in your family and just uh, making me feel like I have family because I don't. Um, I want to say congratulations to you on all of your success. You have SMG uh, Productions. Is there anything you want us to, to know? Like any surprises? What's next for well, you? Well, right now, I, it's just that I'm more in my in my computer trying to create magic, trying to create something that I learn and turn into something better. You know? So it's just more of the SMG network that's going to um, air on Roku and just I, I think I'm going behind the scenes now okay. and, and I want to create stars. I okay. think I have potential of creating stars. So tell us, are you going to have any auditions or are you just going to let people just, are you picking people, hand picking them? You already have an idea because we want to let the people know if they can audition, if they have a chance, how can they reach you all your platforms where they can hit you up for future bookings and things of that nature? Well, some people that I grew up with or that I've seen potential, I'm gonna try to give them an opportunity, friends and family, so they won't see that oh, she got big and all that. But you know, sometimes you can't work with friends and family. But I'm gonna try my best to do that, and then I'm gonna have some people audition. I'm gonna have like I want a network, a casting agency. I want it all, so I can have my all in one, a whole production company. So you can audition. Hit me up on Instagram on Savannah Garcia. Uh, Facebook or more of Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell them the Instagram one more time. My Instagram is Savannah Garcia, S A B A N N A G A R C I A. And you have a TikTok as well, too, right? But you're not on there. I, right? I don't really do TikTok like that, but I do have a TikTok. It's Savannah M. Garcia. I have Snapchat and Facebook, Savannah Maria Garcia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you much for coming queen mommy sunflowers that's what i call you because you are a sunflower you are the light savannah i just want to tell you i love you and thank you once again for coming today and, thank you you. and i appreciate you and thank you for always supporting me thank you for being there and i just want to you know let you know like um i'm somebody out of that app and i'm glad you know me and you did this interview and and just I'm thankful for you reaching out to me. Uh, and you will be gracing the cover and having a full spread and hypnotized magazine. So we got <laughs> I can't wait. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I love Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a good day. Okay. You too. Oh, wait. Just for a second. She ended it.